This is a flight computer, and it took me two years to make. You might think that's a long time, and you're absolutely right. If you're new here, my name is Johnny Shaley, and this is Velocity Launch Systems. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the fourth iteration of the flight computer. You may be thinking, how did it take you four tries to get to this point? And this isn't even the final version. Two things. First off, I don't really know what I'm doing. I had to learn all of this stuff from scratch, and pretty much the extent of my knowledge is just from YouTube tutorials. And second, it turns out making a thrust vector controlled model rocket is really hard. Um, but with that being said, let's take a look at what I've spent two years making. Let's talk about the design of the flight computer. It runs on a TNC 4.1, which is essentially the brain of the flight computer. It runs the program and it controls all the other sensors on board. The IMU is the MPU 6050, and that allows the flight computer to know its orientation as well as acceleration. Um, so that's going to be uh, crucial for knowing the tilt of the rocket as well as how fast it's going. The BMP-180 is the flight computer's barometer and that allows us to see the altitude of the rocket which is also crucial to know when to deploy parachutes, what's the max height, the apogee, um, and some other stuff like that. An RGB LED, which is new to this version, allows us to see uh, the status of the rocket uh, by color so we can see the color of the flight computer and then that'll show us what state the flight computer is in. There's a button which allows you to interact with the flight computer uh, to start launches or to run programs. You can use the button on there. Uh, the buzzer, that allows us to hear the rocket. So if you know it's going through state changes or just ca counting down from something, the buzzer helps us hear it. And then we have some servo outputs at the bottom. Right now, the flight computer only has two servo outputs, the X and Y axes on the TVC mount. But the next iteration will have more servo outputs um, and it'll also have more buttons. And lastly, we have one MOSFET, which allows us to control one pyro charge for the uh, parachute. So another problem is there's only one pyro charge, so there's no backup. Uh, so it's kind of a, you know, you put all your eggs in one basket with this one. But that's another thing we'll fix in the next flight computer. It has a built-in SD card slot, so we're, we are utilizing that on this flight computer. We had that ability last flight computer, but I never got to the point of actually utilizing it. Um, but now we have that SD card so we can store the data, uh, which is really crucial to look back and see the data and see where the rocket failed, if it does, which it, it may. Um, and then this is also um, probably the most exciting part about this flight computer compared to the other ones is this is uh, on a printed circuit board. The other ones were on the proto boards. You had to solder all the connections. It was a pain and there's so many things that can go wrong with that with all the loose wires and all the human error involved. So by having the printed circuit board you eliminate all that human error and you have a really clean looking flight computer in the end. Alright, so we've talked about the hardware and the design of the flight computer. And so you'll see that, you know, the flight computer, it's pretty developed. Um, so you might be wondering, you know, why hasn't he flown yet? And that's because this is only half of it. This, the TVC mount, the rocket, this is only half of the actual mission. The other half is actually writing the code, because without the code, this is all useless. This is just junk. So you need the code to make this work. And not only do you need the code, you need the code to work really good, because with thrust vector control, there's not a lot of room for error. And the code that you write is crucial to how the flight's going to go. Um, so we're going to take a look at what I have here today. Uh, so I want to start off by saying a lot of people ask me for my code. And I don't have a problem with that at all. But the thing is, is I'm going to be honest, I don't really have my code written. Uh, it's you know, I've been working on the project for two years now, and the code isn't even that much developed. Uh, not really where it should be. And that's because the code really isn't my thing. I'm not too much of a programmer. I can do this stuff all day, um, but when it comes to code, I struggle with that a little bit more. You'll see, you know, kind of what I have here for the demo today. Um, and you'll see kind of what pops up when I have the serial monitor. And so I'm just going to show you kind of the flight computer functioning um, and everything that it can do. I have it plugged into my PC right now. Um, and this, you know, works perfectly fine with a 9 volt battery. Uh, all you need is the SD card and the code can run perfectly fine on its own. Uh, but just so you can kind of see what's going on here, we have it hooked up to the computer and I opened up the serial monitor. Uh, so you'll see when we uh, pull up the flight computer serial monitor, uh, it shows that we have the SD card uh, connected. Uh, the BMP-180 has set whatever altitude it started at. It's set it as the baseline zero. So now it can track how, uh, how high you've gone from that baseline. So it calibrates every time you turn on, super handy. Um, the refresh rate is 50. 
Uh, that's out of a thousand, uh, and a thousand equals one second, so that's twenty refreshes per second. Um, and then we have the internal temperature here, which is at forty-four degrees Celsius. Uh, so that just starts, and the TNC does get kind of hot that I've seen. So I put this little heat sink on it, and that seems to help. Uh, so and then we have this little uh, welcome message, welcome Johnny, and then press button to begin launch pr uh, program. Uh, so here's where we use that button that we have built in, and when we press it. You'll see that it actually starts to do stuff, and that's kind of simulating what would happen in a launch. So if I zoom in here on the data scrolling by, you can see we have the X and Y axes, uh, and those are in degrees. So you'll see I have it perfectly, uh, you know, I have it perfectly lined up here, and they're just at about 90 each. Uh, they could be a little bit more calibrated, or I don't have it at perfect 90, but they're close enough. Uh, and these true values simply just mean they're within range of like. It's, it hasn't flipped over. Uh, you'll see if I go over like a certain boundary on one of the axes, it'll go false. And so if I had this hooked up to a servo, which I could, uh, I'm not going to do that for the video today, but if I had it hooked up to a servo, once it hits false, it's going to stop that servo so it doesn't, uh, you know, overturn the servo and break that TVC mount. Uh, but you'll see, you know, when I move the flight computer, it's doing everything it's supposed to do. It's getting those y, X, X and Y axes um, and it's actually storing that data to the SD card right now. If we move over to the fourth line here that's scrolling by us, that is our altitude. So you'll see, you know, we're at zero feet, one feet, two feet. Uh, that's pretty much the range of the barometer. Um, and, you know, this data makes sense. It's not changing because I'm kind of just holding it here within this one foot area. But you'll see if I stand up and I hold it really high, it does go up a couple feet um, on average. So it averages out. And then this new altitude and old altitude thing, uh, that doesn't really concern a whole lot. Um, but it's mainly just these uh, two data points right here, because we only have two sensors. We have that the IMU for the gyroscope and the barometer. So it is getting all the data it needs. And with these two points of data, we can do the whole launch. Um, but uh, yeah, you'll see that the flight computer, and it's powered on. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. And uh, yeah, code's uh, making progress. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the flight computer. Uh, a couple more points I want to talk about is we have the new website. So you'll see right behind me, I have the website, and you can read all about the flight computer. You can see you can read about the thrust vector control mount and a variety of other things. Uh, comment down below what you think, what kind of videos you want to do. Um, and I'm going to start just uploading more often. I'm going to, you know, I'm usually worked up in like how the quality of the video is going to be. And just like trying to figure out what do I make videos of. And I think I'm just going to start making videos of whatever pops in my mind, even if it's like even a really short video, I can do shorts. I'm going to start getting into all that stuff and really just trying to push out as much content as possible uh, to kind of help with the motivation of the project and just keep you updated. But uh, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see y'all later.